Hi friends, welcome back to Embrace the Question. Steve here. Just wanted to spend some time with you and watch another episode of The Chosen. I think this is all working now. I just went through this whole rigmarole about trying to get my equipment to work and I really haven't touched it. So it's Gremlins. I know it's Gremlins. But anyway, the name of our episode today is Spirit. That is episode five of season two. Spirit, aptly named. I think that maybe this is very timely for the time we are in right now. The, the truth is, is that we're dealing a lot with spirits in the world. There is a lot of fear in the world. Fear is a spirit. There are a lot of ups and downs where the downs tend to be fear and the ups tend to be Holy Spirit times. And if we're good, we can kind of keep ourselves up more than down. Uh, that takes a little practice, a little discipline. You have to kind of take every thought captive. Not easy, especially starting out. But this episode here, we're going to see much of the same thing. We, we're going to see people dealing with fear. We're going to see people dealing with Holy Spirit, I think. Uh, at least the presence of Jesus while he was here. And, you know, I think it's also worth saying that this whole spirit thing was very new to the Jewish people at the time of Jesus. They didn't have a real grid for the invisible. Everything that they dealt with was very much visible. It was in the sensual realm. It was, it was, that's why their law was don't taste that, don't touch that, don't look at that. So they were used to dealing in the sensual realm. But the spirit the Spirit is everything that Jesus was trying to describe to his disciples when he said, God is Spirit. He also would say to Nicodemus, you hear the wind? We don't know where it comes from or where it's going, but such is the Spirit. The disciples would have probably freaked out a little bit. What they didn't, what they, what they were used to was a temple they could see, sacrifices, lamps they could hear, they can smell the good and the bad, they could smell the blood of the sacrifice, but they could also smell the incense of the temple. They could see the menorah, the seven-branched lampstand. They could hear the water flowing in the laver, but you know, these are these are things you can touch. Uh, but worshiping in spirit and truth, like Jesus was describing to the Samaritan woman, that's a new thing. And the lovely thing about that was, even when he was describing it to the Samaritan woman, his disciples were, were listening, and, and they were learning. And I think we still have a lot to learn about the Spirit, too. So let's watch this episode and see what we can pick up. Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, whose world lacks nothing and who made wondrous creatures and good trees through which he brings pleasure to the children of Adam. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in the I believe why a lot of people this might not be their favorite episode for a lot of people that that disturbs them because Mary was a champion of sorts she was the representation of coming out of darkness into light 
the healing power, the, the delivering power of God. And now she's struggling again, and people did not like that. Uh, that's why we don't like it. But um, let's not exhaust that one yet, because we're going to get to see a lot more of that story. Let's see what goes on. Did he tell you his name? Jesus. Jesus who? From where? Lineage, origin. His favorite food. He told me his name. That's it. There were a million Jews here for the festival. Thousands named Jesus. Jesse, stop pacing. With all due respect, Rabbi, I've been still for 38 years. Tell us exactly what he said. Again! He told me to go and sin no more. That the result of sin is far worse than being crippled. And to pick up your mat. When he healed me, yes. But he found me earlier today as well. Was anyone with him? Uh, three men? One was taking notes. I think another said a few words to me as Jesus disappeared. <laughs> I barely heard anything. I used my legs. <laughs> Jesse. Uh, the other said something. But by the time you finished yelling at me, they were all gone. Think. What else did he say to you today? They were going to see... Jesus' cousin, I think. It was him. It was Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth? out so it's true then you're on your feet are you Roman does my accent give me away I already told the Sanhedrin all I know <laughs> I was born Roman mm. yes but I'm just a man I had to see with my own eyes I believe was a miracle. I know it was. Oh. Life changing. Hmm? But forbidden. You must want to shout from the rooftops. <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> um, do you at least have anyone close to share the good news with? Friends? Family? I encountered my brother almost immediately after leaving the pool. Incredible. <laughs> and what did he think? It's safe. Jesse, you can tell me. He believes the man responsible has to be of the Messiah. <laughs> Look, I don't know who these guys are in real life. <clears throat> I don't know who these actors are. I don't recognize them. Like Atticus. Certainly Jesse. I, they may be famous. I don't know. I don't think so. But they should be. <laughs> because they are really... I think they are fantastic. You know, back in the day, when you did a Christian film you could just bank on the fact that it was not going to be the best acting. The sets were going to be cheap, the production cheap, everything a little bit flaky. It's, uh, nothing about this is, is cheap. Nothing about this is less than excellent. They didn't settle, did they? Atticus is a... <clears throat> He's a puzzling one for me. <clears throat> a 
Atticus is a puzzling one for me. And I like him. He's very likable. He's kind of like Quintus in that regard. You, you, you know he's not a good guy, but you can't help but kind of like him. Is he going to turn at some point? Is he going to become a believer? I, I sense that that statement from Jesse about the Messiah's appearance kind of hit him. So I, I've been pondering that and, and where does he fit in and will he fit in again later in the story? I still think maybe Gaius is the centurion that is spoken of in the Gospels that had the great faith. But this guy Atticus certainly could play a big part and, and I, don't, I don't yet know what it is. I hope that he turns because he's a likable guy. It's all you put into me is pure. You created it, you formed it, and you breathed it into me. You preserve it within me, and you will restore it. smell you so I can smell you <laughs> come no closer how did you know I was following you the demon that possesses me no. please please enlarge you that won't be easy if you can kill me do it are you a Roman no a tax collector please <laughs> Your body is temporal. A demon will go on, pass through the waterless places and find someone else. If you're strong enough to have lucid moments, it's safer in you. Until you find someone who can truly help you, God bless you. It makes me cut myself. Would you believe this isn't the strangest thing that's happened to me in the past week? my brother goodbye yesterday at the end of the feast. He'd been lying in the pool of his own. Is he a what? holy person? Not for a long time. It has a bad feeling about you. First of all, I love that scene. It's a, it's a, an intense scene. 
demons were real. They were, they are real. They were real then, and they were a problem for many people. Now, here's where I'm going to start to nitpick. Simon, although he is obviously a dangerous man, he is a martial artist, obviously in real life. He's got some moves, doesn't he? But he's very confident in this scene. More confident than I think a man that does not have Holy Spirit yet should be. He knew that it was better for the demon to stay in the man than to be let loose to wander the, the dry places. Now, I know that that is what Jesus taught. But did others teach that before that? Why did Simon know that? And if you know... Put that in the comments. Is that out of the Old Testament? Because I don't think so. It, it could be, but I don't think so. Because I there is very limited uh, information slash dialogue in the Old Testament writing about demons. Very limited. So... That Simon would have known that is not likely. That he would have been that calm is not likely. But uh, I still enjoyed it very much. And I like the part where the man says, uh, it has a bad feeling about you. And Simon's response was, thank you. That's how we should be. And demons should have a bad feeling about us as well. And I think maybe some of us are getting there, yes. Interesting stuff. Let's keep going. He said after the feast, we could find him near the Jordan, outside Jericho. We passed Jericho a while ago. Near is a relative term. And John's never where you expect him to be. <laughs> Hello, cousin. Oh, I heard about the scandal at the pool. I love it! I figured you would. They're gonna come after you so hard for that. Uh, let them come. I see you're still not eating meat, huh? Boy, the hassle of it all. Skin and bones. Listen, we don't have much time. Time? I left Jacob and the rest of my followers in Jericho to preach repentance. I have to go back to Jerusalem. Jerusalem? We were all just there. You didn't hear the news? What? Herod divorced Facilis and he's marrying Herodias, his brother's ex-wife. Someone has to call them out on this filth. Good man, will you allow me a moment with my cousin? So we're not very far into this episode so far and we've already dealt with spirit. The man with the evil spirit. Obviously John that jumps out and scares the heck out of every, every, everyone else. But you can sense that Jesus is going to have a serious heart-to-heart -heart with John, who has always been hung up on matters of the law. Which is why the scripture says the law and the prophets were until John. The law and the prophets were until John. So John is very hung up on the law as far as he can't let any one thing go, and as far as the law goes, the law can't. Understand this, John represents a law that cannot let anything go because it's law. He is the embodiment of what law is. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, which is why, although they love one another, they don't have the same perspective on things. And we're going to hear more about that, but I like, you already know that Creepy John is one of my favorites. He's just got that look. And um, he's quite enjoyable for me to, to watch and listen to. And I'm looking forward to this conversation that's coming up. Oh, Adonai, my God in you. The root is in these three characters. He, Samet, Het. To seek refuge. But 
there's no he. Oh, it's swallowed up in the ending characters. How does it do that? Um, the ending characters are... Um, it's defining the action as... Um, to remember the rule. No, it's okay. No, it's really frustrating. I know this. Let's take a break. No. I'm sorry. Um. <clears throat> uh, from my pursuers and deliver me lest they cut a lion tear, not cut and notice that the lion is not receiving the tearing, he's doing the tearing the calf is the hint of that uh, lest like a lion they tear Not going well. Couldn't agree more. You see it too. How frustrated Mary is. When she needs a pause to compose herself, she takes a drink of water. No, I meant staying behind with you while everyone else is out chopping wood or whatever. Daniel said he needs more posts for the new tent. I know. They said that we are better suited handling the food. Yes, Matthew, I was there. This is what I'm talking about. It's because I was a tax collector. <laughs> you were a tax collector? You knew that. I think you're arrogant. <laughs> I don't think you're right. I'm very humble. You're bragging about your humility. And yes, it's because you were a tax collector. And why are you watching Rayma so closely? I'm not watching her. Oh, you're collecting Torah verses? You're donating your tablets? They're easy to get. Do you like her? <laughs> you can be very illogical when you're emotional. So I think I've underestimated how abstract this entire episode seems to be. Everyone's dealing with a spirit. We've got this episode where we've got this scene with Rayma and Mary, and Mary's having trouble dealing with the fear that she experienced. She's maybe experiencing something she thought she was rid of. Have you ever been there? You ever think you got delivered from something and then figure out that it has come back or you're not completely over it or you still struggle with things? And that can be a very sobering thing, or even depressing. Maybe scary, and I think that, again, is where Mary is right now. But you also see it with, with Thomas and Matthew. And Thomas, I, was anyone else waiting for him to, to chop his finger off there with a butcher knife? I kind of was. I'm glad they didn't go there. But they're dealing with stuff too. Spirits of jealousy and resentment and everything else. Uh, spirit. That which is unseen. This is really a pretty crafty bit of writing, I think. Right there in the book of Moses, if a man takes his brother's wife, it is impurity. He has uncovered his brother's nakedness. They shall be childless. I understand this against the law of Moses, but I'm here for bigger purposes than the breaking of rules. You minimize incest? Of course not. What if the laws of Moses will be minimized? All of this will be addressed. I'm not ready to get into the specifics. You appear to be not ready to get into the specifics of a lot of things. For instance... Stay on topic. 
the romantic lives of rulers and kings has been and always will be of enormous fascination to people. It was covered at length in Torah. I don't see why you feel the need to focus on he's it now. He's a client king or tetrarch or whatever. He's one of us and he's unlawful. I am not afraid of him. He may not be as bad as his father, but he is still bad. I'm gonna march straight into his court and I'm gonna tell him to his face. My followers will love it. You do know how that's going to end, don't you? I get arrested all the time. It's what radicals do. I'll be fine. Herod is afraid of me. The people hold me to be a prophet. Some say Elijah himself. <laughs> Maybe not the Elijah, but we both know of the Elijahness of your own. Do we? Because I'm beginning to wonder why you're taking this so slow. Why you're always running away after performing miracles. Tell me, why do you always go off to these desolate places? I need solitude. I'm working on something. A sermon. A big one. Oh. You're the planning type. Hmm? I always say the first thing that comes to my mind. In preaching and in life. Yes, I remember from the time you started talking. And I heard about that brood of vipers comment. That was classy. <laughs> Do you know how the poets say vipers are born? Yes, they hatch inside their mothers and eat their way out, killing their mothers in the process. I thought it was a pretty good line. Yes, but no one wants to be accused of killing their ima. Yeah, well, I'm not here to make friends with religious leaders. And judging by that stunt you pulled on the Sabbath, neither are you. Are you really going to be nice to these people? I suppose not. Just be careful. Now is not the time to be careful. Thirty years you've been here. David was a shepherd and in the wilderness and on the run for 30 years before he became king. Yes, and then he ruled for 40 years. He killed a bunch of people, made horrible mistakes, and then he died in bed with a teenager he was not married to. Maybe not the best analogy, but also she was there to keep him warm. I know, Everyone knows. I know, I, I know what you mean. But what I'm saying is taking all this time, telling all these stories, I must confess I'm eager for you to get to the point. Look, I'm going to tell stories that make sense to some people, but not to others. And that's just how it's going to be. I get it. It's not like I'm preaching stories for children either. It's becoming real, isn't it? Everything we've prepared for? It is. I mean, it's always been real, but it's one thing to preach about it. To hear my Abba's prophecy growing up and your Ima's song. Hmm. But it's heavy when it becomes real. No? Do you feel ready? I'm always ready to do my father's will. But that doesn't make it easy. Listen, I was rude to you before, but it's only because we go back so far and I can tease a bit. But you know that my heart is yours. My life is yours. The sole reason why I was miraculously conceived by two old people was to pave the way for you. I'm just impatient for you to get to work. I understand. And I'm grateful for your part. You have done God's work, albeit in a uh, unique way. <laughs> Guilty is charged. <laughs> yeah. That's perhaps a poor choice of words. Perhaps. <laughs> wow, man.
man, that is a really cool scene. Jesus and John the Baptist. You can't get much more heavyweight than that as far as spiritual heroes go. And you wonder, were they really that close? Did they know each other that well? I know that they were related, but did they grow up playing together? I don't have a problem that they they might have. I mean, surely they, they probably did. They probably saw each other on feasts. Family is a big deal in that culture. Um, that's why Mary went to stay that with with uh, that family early on. So I'm sure they did grow up playing together. And I do believe, honestly, that during the account of the feeding of the 5,000, when Jesus went up, uh, he, he went up and then the 5,000 basically came out to him. He was in mourning at that time because that's right after John had been killed. He had learned about the death of John, and I think that really did hit him hard, although it doesn't really come out and say it in the Gospels. This part, though, about what they've done here is they framed things very well uh, and accurately, I, I do believe. Uh, John is saying, I'm just, I'm just anxious for you to get started. Uh, what did he say? I'm, I'm impatient for you to get to work. I'm impatient for you to get to work. And I know that was really probably true because if you'll recall, in, in the Gospels, John is in prison and he sends his disciples, the people that are close to him that have been outside the bars, sent those guys to Jesus and said, is it really you? Is it really you? Are you really the one? Meaning the one that Moses talked about. Are you the Messiah? And the reason he had to ask was because Jesus was being so slow, at least in his eyes. Jesus hadn't come and done what the Messiah was supposed to do. He hadn't turned the world upside down. Um at least in a very visible way. And now we've, you know, we're in this episode called Spirit, dealing with the unseen realm. It's good stuff. Now, the one thing, the one thing I will say uh, is Jesus talks about how classy it is to, to call the, the Pharisees a brood of vipers. And the truth is, is that Jesus used that a lot. He used it twice in Matthew. I think Matthew... I don't remember. Matthew 12, maybe. Matthew 24, at least twice in Matthew, and I think in other, in other areas of the Gospels as well, record that very same thing. Um, but yeah, John started it, I think. John, John started calling on that, and Jesus picked it up and continued. Mm. So he, he might not have really gotten on to John about that, knowing that he was going to use it himself really a good really a good scene i still do like creepy john yep i like just watching his mannerisms the uh he fits that part really well it would have been difficult to find a, a person to fit the role of john the baptist i mean here's this guy is all but labeled a crazy label labeled a lunatic he, he lives in the desert he's wearing camel skin and eating bugs and wild honey and yeah that's just he was out there Is it? It's hard work. How old were you when you learned this? I was young. I think it's easier when you're a child, but I had a better teacher than you. I'm sorry about before. Don't worry about it. I just feel, um, I don't know, I 
So I saw a Roman on, on horseback today when I was picking persimmons. Did he question you? No. He didn't even see me. But just the, the sight of him made me... filled me with... I just dropped my basket and ran. <laughs> ignored the prayers in my hands. This is hard. Not just the readings. Do you want to try again? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, now we... Now we get it. Now we understand why she's so upset. Mary is so upset. She let herself down. She totally ignored the prayers that were in her hands. That's hard. As Rima said, that was her wording. That, that is hard. And that's the same pit that we fall into because we are supposed to be Christians. We are supposed to be above falling into the same pits. We are supposed to be without reproach. We are supposed to be prepared for everything, right? And then we find out that we're not. We find out that we're still susceptible sometimes, that we still wear this earth suit that is weak. Paul talked a lot about that, didn't he? He said the spirit's willing, but the flesh, it's weak. You know, this whole, uh, this whole defeating sin thing, there's a reason why sin is... There's a reason why sin is represented as a snake in Scripture. And one of those reasons is if you cut the head off a snake, it can still hurt you. The snake's dead. But that, that head can still bite, and the body still moves. And that's the way sin is. We cut the head off of it sometimes. And yeah, it's dying. And it's dying in your life. But we still get too close to the head sometimes. Or we take too long looking at that slithering body that's still on the ground. And we think, oh my, it's still alive in me. I really haven't overcome anything. And that's what the voice is whispering in your ear, right? You really haven't overcome anything. Everything that you said at the altar, that was a lie, wasn't it? Everything that you believe in is just a lie. And that's what the voice tells you. And the defeat that we feel is exactly what Mary is experiencing. So, yeah, we're dealing with spirit. Spirit. This is a pretty entertaining episode to watch. We are at the halfway point. So we're going to cut this one in half, and we're going to talk a lot about cutting things in half lately. We're going to cut this episode in half so that it's not too long. I don't know what that does to the, the YouTube engine if you have over an hour. But um, yeah, anyway. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for watching this. We're going to do the second half. It's coming up pretty soon because I, I really like this one and I'll be anxious to get into the second half with you. Um, hey, I signed up on a new thing. If you, this is a shameless plug, but if, if you want to buy me coffee, some people ask, how can I support you? Well, I really don't have a means for doing that, but I do like coffee. So if you want to just buy me a cup of coffee, there is a link right down here in the description and you can see where I have started a buy a cup of coffee thing and there's a blog in there and you just check it out. Be, be my first visitor, okay? I will see you all soon. Blessings to you. Peace.